it all started with the chatbot phenomenon, right? I mean, uh, for you and I, I mean, we have played with the earliest chatbot, Eliza. I'm pretty sure some of, you know, the gray-haired people also must have heard about it. But back then, you know, Eliza did not quite catch on because it wasn't, you know, giving us a very human experience, right? People were easily trying to, uh, you know, break it and they did succeed as well. They asked some tricky questions and they didn't give a very comprehensive and accurate answer. But, you know, when chat GPT came onto the scenes, people did try to break it, but they felt that, no, it is giving a really coherent and great answer. Uh, do you think, you know, chatbot has caught on at the right time, at the right place, and perhaps chat GPT is the one, you know, reaping rewards of earlier, you know, technological innovations. If you quite recollect, I think it was Google, which quite came up with the transformer model first, and that formed the basis of, you know, all these large language models. Uh, perhaps chat GPT was, you know, at the right time, at the right place, and they just caught on. Uh, what is your earlier recollection of, you know, using Elisa and how you you think this particular phenomenon has caught on? I think all these things kind of build on each other over a period of time. The, if I think back to how chat was happening online at, at one point, like bulletin boards, I don't know if you ever remember bulletin boards, I'm probably too young to remember bulletin boards, but like that was a way that things were done at some point and how we engage with people online. The early days for a lot of people, including millennials, was like Messenger um, and AOL, like, you know, having the, the small kind of pop up. And if we think about like the idea of going on to Messenger or a chat room or something like that, it feels a little bit alien now compared to like how most people are doing things, exchanging messages via WhatsApp, et cetera, et cetera. So I think most of these things are iterations on a previous form. Um, that original chatbot, at least as you mentioned, it is an earlier form of that. I think ChatGPT have built on top of these ideas, not just that one, but a number of them. And maybe the, the key thing is that it's not just the idea, but like who does it really well? If you think back to my, my old workplace, if you think back to, to Facebook, Facebook wasn't the first social network, you know, and, and Mr. Zuckerberg is quite happy to admit that it wasn't the first social network. What he did was did it like way better than other people can. I say way better, both the user experience, but also the data structure that's needed in order to understand what's going on behind the scenes, how people are engaging, um, how that data can be stored and used to make a better user experience and a better advertiser experience. Like that was something that was done way better than other people. And so I think if you take the example of ChatGPT and OpenAI, yes, they've built on previous models. Yes, they've, they've certainly taken the transformer ideas from Google's original 2017 paper, and they've built a much better system. Did they do it just by coming up with the idea? No, but they've got a very, very clever way of using transformers in order to be able to answer the questions that we like to do 